Eunice Muni Williams is a Southern Voices Network scholar with the Wilson Center's Africa program. She also serves as a knowledge translation officer at the African Institute for Development Policy in Kenya. She joins us to discuss the demographic dividend in sub-Saharan Africa. Eunice, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Let me first start with the definition. What are we talking about? What is a demographic dividend? Demographic dividend is simple terms is you're talking about the extra economic growth that you get when you have more working people in the population. That comes about when you uh, reduce fertility and have the population that is within the 15 to, 6 to 64 year mm -hmm. age, uh, age group. Having that by, by mere uh, fact that you have more of that than and they're uh, working, then you will have more uh, productive population and uh, get an economic uh, uh, growth. Less uh, younger children dependents and older people, retired people dependents on, the, on both ends of the scale. Oh yes, because you have a, a lower child dependency burden and also because the older population is not yet uh, huge, then, uh, most, uh, then, then the dependency burden is reduced when you have these uh, large people in the working age population. So uh, this, define how uh, fertility relates to this, how these two things overlap. Is there an ideal fertility rate that replenishes a population properly but then doesn't have too many people being? You know? uh, certainly, we, we, we are talking about um, a population that is just uh, uh, enough to uh, replace the population that, that the, uh, replace the people that are, that are um, uh, retiring or dying, retiring or dying, yeah. and that is uh, <clears throat> we are talking of. Uh, if every couple have uh, two children, and then we we add, uh, so we say the replacement fertility level is two point one, mm -hmm. two children to just replace the couple, and then we add the point one because of the infertility where couples do not have children. So we are talking of if uh, um, couples could only could have uh, two and. Point one children, that is a, a replacement fertility level, then that will just make sure the population is not growing, it's, uh, it stabilizes. Mm -hmm. and so you're just replacing the uh, population that we're losing either through death or yeah, and, through death. And, and then the benefit is an economic benefit, a, st a more stable economy? Um, an ec economic um, uh, benefit, a more stable economy, we are talking of you're, you're spending less resources in um, uh, social uh, services and uh, because of the uh, few number of children mm -hmm. and most of the resources then are saved because you have more people who are working, they'll tend to save more and invest more. And in that case, um, you, then you'll have um, economic um, uh, stability, you'll have uh, economic growth because, uh, and then as, as the population, um, as the population as the more you have more people working and then the population lives longer. So they will have a longer time to save and a longer time uh, for investments, which uh, will then contribute to the economic uh, growth. So, so how do you make this happen? I mean, you can't just have a policy, right? You have to convince people in a sort of public education way. How, how, do, you, how do you convince people that 2.1 is the optimal well, <laughs> uh, amount of children? Well, um, uh, the demographic dividend, just by lowering fertility or achieving the the 2.1 uh, children, uh, the replacement fertility level, will itself not um, resort to economic growth. Mm -hmm. uh, so course, even if you get that right? Oh yes, if you get that, done. yeah, there's more to be done. We are talking about these people, this uh, bulge that you get because of lowering uh, fertility, then these people have to be working. You have to give them uh, adequate number of jobs, but we also give them have to give them quality education mm -hmm. that will give them the skills to contribute in the econ uh, the, the economy. And uh, you also have to create um, uh, a favorable uh, favorable environment for the private sector to improve because most of the time it's not actually the government that creates jobs; it's the private sector. So creating an, a, a favorable uh, environment to enable the private sector to invest then that is in self will also uh, 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 create uh, jobs. But how do we reduce then, how do we achieve this uh, uh, replacement level fertility? And we are talking of, we are talking of uh, 
three factors. We are talking of uh, improving uh, contraceptive use. We are talking of uh, educating women beyond uh, primary education so that they are able to delay the age at which they get married. And also they are able to acquire the, uh, acquire the skills they need to effectively contribute to the in economy and also reducing child mortality. Mm -hmm. Child mortality so that you assure um, women or couples that the few children that they have, they are going to survive to, matur to maturity. But then the, I think the biggest issue that we have in Africa is really the, the high prevalence for large families. You find that because of the issue of the high value of children, the high value of children that is uh, uh, um, in Africa, uh, in terms of uh, religious, in terms of uh, ethnic, then you find that it's not just about um, the economic value of children. There's a lot of status that is given to uh, large families. And we are talking that is like the, the entry point that you should, that um, governments should come in, that um, uh, international don uh, policy makers or donors should come in to actually uh, start uh, thinking of uh, reducing the fertility, achieving the low fertility in, in Africa. Is there a, a country you could point to that is having particular success and, and, and tell us some things that they're doing that's making it so? Certainly, we have uh, a few countries, mostly in the southern African region, that have uh, achieved uh, the replacement fertility level or are about, they are almost, uh, 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 the, the, the um, fertility rate is almost um, uh, to the level of the replacement uh, fertility. And we are talking of... Um, countries like Botswana, like Mauritius, South Africa. And what we see is that um, really these countries uh, realize the importance of uh, slowing population growth because of the uh, negative effect it had on the uh, economic uh, growth of the country. And they, and they realize, um, if we talk of, we look at uh, Mauritius first, government realized that uh, they needed to slow the population growth. And what, what happened really to drive the, um, to, to, for the, the concept of the small families to be entrenched in the population, it's really related to the decline in child mortality. Mm -hmm. you remember we uh, talked of, uh, for uh, facility to decline, talked of reducing child mortality. Yes. Uh, contraceptive use and education. So for Mauritius, it was really reducing uh, child mortality. And this came about when the campaign to reduce, to eliminate malaria, that was started in mm -hmm. um, early or late 19, uh, 1940s. So mortality went down. So uh, women or couples, parents, uh, realized that actually they could get a few children and attain their, their um, reproductive goals. But then, because now fertility came, uh, child mortality uh, reduced, then the government also was, because of this idea of uh, reducing population growth, then uh, they started, um, they started uh, education for women. And if you look at the uh, data for Mauritius, we find that uh, the country had uh, achieved uh, almost universal uh, Literacy, uh, literacy rate by early 1960s. Mm -hmm. And then now with the increased demand, because more women are, are going to school and uh, mortality has declined, so the demand for contraceptives in, increased. And because the government was also uh, providing um, free contraceptives to the women, then women were able to achieve the, to achieve law uh, fertility. Yeah. Because I guess of that, those having factors, children yeah. later in life too, it will Hatching, add, add to that. Having children later in life and when, when, they needed, when they needed them and also having able to achieve the, uh, the number of children that they needed because they could access the contraceptives that they needed. Yeah. Is there momentum building in this regard? Is this a trend in Africa? Are, are cultures and nations uh, trying to achieve this with, with purpose and with focus? Well, there is, um, with, with the current interest that is uh, building around the demographic dividend, there's a lot of talk about how 
uh, countries can really achieve low fertility and 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 so this the the, the countries that are had uh, achieved low fertility uh, they, are, they they will provide lessons for other countries mm -hmm. but i think there is there's currently what we are getting is a lot of focus on um, increasing contraceptive use but i but i think we should uh, sort of like um, step back and look at what is it that uh, women and couples are having still have uh, um, high fertility mm -hmm. and I think the best thing is uh, we realize is that there is still a very high demand for children and as much as we focus because again we can't just um, do one thing and leave the others as much as we continue providing um, contraceptives that women need we should also educate the community as a whole and this is where the government comes in because uh, uh, the, the 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 if the government comes in to not to uh, to sort of prescribe the uh, family size or the number of children that a family can have, but actually telling them the idea, selling out the idea of a, a small uh, family size, then that is it's itself that in itself is going to actually make people understand the benefits of having a smaller family and and it will increase the demand for uh, contraceptives and we, because of the currently we have a very high global attention to reproductive health and specifically contraceptive use so if we could step back back and actually look at what is it that uh, uh, how we can communicate the idea of a small concept to families in Africa, then we are going to achieve uh, low fertility. A final question, Eunice, uh, uh, shifting gears away okay. from this topic. I know you've had a term here at the Wilson Center as a Southern Voices uh, Network scholar, and it's coming to an end. Oh, yes. So just uh, tell us, has it been useful to you uh, being at the center and being part of the Southern Voices Network? Certainly. It's been a very wonderful experience. I, I, t I would like to say that I met um, uh, very challenging uh, 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 scholars or even or, uh, staff at the Wilson Center and even the people who were attending the very many events that are held at the center. Mm -hmm. I can say that I really learned a lot and not even from my research, but also talking to these people, listening to the presenters, asking questions. That in itself was a very, I can say, eye-opening uh, opportunity, a very um, enlightening opportunity. So for me, this, my time at the Wilson Center has been great, very uh, uh, enlightening, and I've learned a lot. Well, I'm glad Changed it's... even my view. Uh, you know, sometimes yeah, you, 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 you come in thinking, this is how I'm going to re do my research. Right. But direction with other people. You change the direction. Wow, change interesting. The direction, yeah. well, well, thank you as well. I mean, it's been great having you here, and I'm mm -hmm. glad it's been a great experience for you, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you and for having me and uh, for hosting me here. Great. Thank you. Take care, everybody.